Megan McArdle is an opinion columnist for the Washington Post and has previously written for The Atlantic, Newsweek, Bloomberg View, New York Post, and The Guardian. She writes about economics, finance, and government policy and has long held a concern about the world's falling birth rates. In 2019, she was kind enough to give me an interview in her home in Washington, D.C., on condition that her dog Fitzgerald could join in too. People think immigration is the solution. And right. On many levels, it, it's not. It can be part of a solution, potentially. Absolutely. So that's and great. immigration has kept United States birth rates higher than uh, Western Europe. I mean, there, there was a long time, right? when it was us, New Zealand, and Iceland, and everyone else was below replacement and the United States was above. Uh, and now it's just plucky Iceland. You know, when birth rates are rising, immigrants seem like they're joining, right? Um, and when birth rates are falling very fast, then immigrants seem like your replacements. If you're a 1.3, 1.6, um, 0.9, I think South Korea is now at, um, you can't make that up with immigration. You're talking about basically one for one importing, you know, one immigrant for every baby you had. And politically, as we've seen all across uh, the United States, Europe, North America, it is challenging to say we're going to have 25, 30 percent of our population be foreign born. We really don't understand what economies look like when the population is, is declining. The first thing that politicians are tempted to do is just borrow money to cover the deficit, right? Your, your healthcare bill goes up, your, your pension bill goes up, everything goes up. Your tax revenues start to fall because you've got this baby boom generation that's leaving the workforce. And the problem is that just makes everything worse. Um, and I think that that is, it, it really, it's really distressing. The United States has been particularly bad in this regard. But we're certainly not the only people who have, have gone that route. And unfortunately, I think, you know, this whole issue is about short term versus long term. It's really difficult. No one has found any kind of foolproof solution. We know things that tweak it a little bit. But we don't actually know things that, that move the needle from below replacement to above replacement. And to do that, I think, for one thing, we're going to have to think about throwing everything at the problem, right? People really still haven't grappled with what this means. I don't even think they've grappled with it in Japan. They're just starting to because, again, these things are so slow moving, mm -hmm. right? It's like if you imagine someone when the last ice age was starting, like every year they might have noticed it was getting a little colder, maybe the glacier's a little closer. But it you know, probably took a long time for them to realize, oh, no, this isn't just... Uh, that it's a little colder and the glacier's a little closer, it's actually that we've had a radical change. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that Japan is on the cusp of that discovery, as is China, mm -hmm. that, that they're now getting to the point where it's really going to become clear what all these choices they've been making for decades have meant. Why do you think it has happened? Raising kids is really time intensive. It's really labor intensive. Um, it's incredibly rewarding, but the rewards often come later. And the things that make us happy in, in the short term might be having a rewarding job and going on lots of awesome vacations. And the thing that we really want at the age of 65 might be four kids and 17 grandkids, right? And that that may actually be part of the problem is that married women were happier before because it turns out that having kids over the long run, not in the short run, is very important to, to happiness, especially of women. And that's a problem, especially because I don't actually think that the late marriage is necessary for women to be educated and, and have opportunities, right? It's something that has happened along with it, but we could change our cultural emphasis and say, no, actually, you shouldn't think of like 28 to 30 as your target date for getting married. Think of 23 to 26. And then a lot more women would be able to complete the fertility that they want. I'm someone who married at 37 and had always thought I would have kids, and then it turned out I wasn't going to. Um, and I think it can be a tremendous source of unhappiness. I think the conclusion I came to was that I look at all of my friends. No one got everything they planned on. Everyone got some of it. No one got the whole package. I know we've got a dog to look after. Let me just show you these maps very, very quickly. Absolutely. 